Las Vegas last December started out here, and so far, four have gone out in the first round. David Alcady is the last man standing from that team, and now he faces the only player here it's from the American elect. side they beat. 2022 champion of the world, Shane Van Boning. Carl, this should be a real treat to end day two here in Brentwood. Yeah, this one's going to be a cracker. You just have that feeling, don't you? And both guys are sat in the chair now, about to start, and they know that... Thank you, it's the first rack. David they have a the chance break. of carving out a little bit of history. Both won it twice, as we just said. This is going to be a cracker. Yeah, there you can see the difference in the two brake shots. That was a lot softer. And a little bit more draw on the cue ball to make the one on the side, but it's got brake. Both two-time winners of this title, as you've said. Ralph Suke is the only player ahead of them. Way out in front of everyone else with his six wins. Great memories for David Alcady of this venue. This is where he won the World Cup for Spain with Francisco Sanchez Ruiz last summer. Extension, please. So this looks like it just sneaks past the brown seven. Forty-four years of age now, David Alcady. He was runner-up in this event all the way back in 2007. Thomas Angers. It's a tournament that's meant so much to him. <coughs> Famous length of the table, bank shot to win it in 2019 against Alex Kazakis, having been champion two years earlier, also in a Hill Hill finish against Jason Shaw. This is just the ideal start, this, for David. It always settles you down. Yeah, dream opening, David O'Kady. No time at all, leads 1-0. Let's hear from this affable Spaniard. Really, really happy that I am here. Every tournament you, you won, I think, is special. Always when you play World Pool Mass, not the matter is wheelcar or by ranking, it's pressure for, for us, for the player. We're trying to stay focused in all game and we will see what happens. I play with him so many times. Everybody knows who is Chain. He's, he's a champion. He's two top three player in the world. I try to give my best, and we will see. 
I try to 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 think about the next the next match uh, against Chain. Never feels quite right, Carl, when I say his age, because he doesn't look anything like 44. But how would you sum up his career so far and what he's achieved? Do you think he's lived up to his potential? Yeah, I mean, you could argue maybe he could have won a little bit more in the sport, but I think there's been a time in his career where he's not been a full-time player. Obviously, now I think he is. The so sack in the rack. Maybe that's maybe why he's the break. a bit of a leading one nil starter. Fast start in this match, though, and he looks to build on it here. Work to do here as David. Two balls doesn't pass the purple five. The combination onto the five. That is super difficult as well. This is nice. That was not easy from David there. A little stun shot in behind the purple. Well done. Shane Van Boning by a few years, the younger of the two. He'll be 40 this summer. Don't really think we can even find the need to ask the question as to whether he's lived up to his potential in the game. Took him a long time to be world champion. Finally did that last year. A record equaling five US Open titles and simply one of the greatest there's ever been. He's a good hit. He needs the two to slow down. No, it didn't. Maybe it did. If it had just stayed near that jaw, it, it, well, it, maybe it has. It might just be a bit awkward for David. A little bit like what Mario was faced with in the previous match where he tried to pop the five and missed it and the cue ball Extension stayed call. in the jaws. And yeah, the point was in the way, so wasn't the worst leave from Shane there. It was a good hit, of course. It was not an easy hook to get out of. Flicked the six ball on the way through, didn't they? Yep. We'll have a, another look at that from above. It's amazing that the ball still went in the pocket. Yeah. This is Alcady's third attempt to win a match in the World Masters for the first time since that 2019 victory. Like so many things, the tournament didn't happen in 2020, in the COVID year. And he did finally get to defend the title, lost his first match to Skylar Woodward and also went out in his first match last year against Copenhagen. Yeet. It was a good positional effort there from David. Playing the green six up into the top left. Cue ball's going to run into the nine. Yeah, he's tried to force it through. He's not fluked the nine, has Oh, he? wait a minute, wait a minute. Oh, wow, is. what a way to go 2-0 in front. <laughs> Well, the things you see 
on a pool table just never ceases to amaze you, does it? That was unbelievable. He's missed the six by a mile. Look at this one. Well, as we saw there, no one does a look of disgust quite like Shane Van Boning. And I think he's entitled to it there. That was extraordinary fortune for Al Cady. Missed it by quite a way. And six comes back this end. Thumps into the nine. And the most unintentional combo makes it 2 0. Yeah, I would say that's probably the, the greatest fluke we'll see this year. Shane Van Boning would certainly agree. That was what he thought of it. Never has the most upbeat of looks on his face, but even for him, it was a fairly contemptuous look. Be third rack. So, David O'Kady, 2 0 up. Leading by two wrecks to nil. Good news for SVB fans is he doesn't have a shot on the blue two. So unless he decides to go for a crazy kick shot, we'll see Shane approach the table. If he does win this match, it'll certainly be a good omen for Al Cady. He's beaten Van Boning on the way to both of his World Masters titles. Quarterfinals in both instances. Yeah, Shane should have been playing Fedor Gorst, but Fedor Gorst, his visa didn't make it in time. Yeah, that was one we were all looking forward to, weren't we, when we saw the draw come out, but not a bad replacement fixture, and we understand Gorst should be in England in time to play in the UK Open in a few weeks, so that'll be great. shot there from David very very adapting them types of situations the safety side of nine ball just look at the little gap he found there to play a kick and stick So another opening has been forced. Some expression we're seeing for all sorts of reasons over and over again in the early stages of this match. Last match of the first round, and whoever wins it will play Copin Yi, who beat Jason Shaw 9 1 last night. Yeah, Shane's in survival mode now. This is what happens when you start a match out and just things have not gone your way. 
That tells you all you need to know, but how many times has SVB done this to an opponent? Oh, where's the cue ball going? Where is the cue ball going? Oh, what an error right. this is! Got what a head. turning point this is! And what a waste, really! Looked like 3 0 all done. over. This just didn't need to happen. Look at the little flick on the nine ball just to find that little Cross gap. Up. Wow. And boning out of his chair like a shot. Delighted to see the reprieve. Ball's got to go up top of the table and back down. Well, it looked like 3 0 all day long, but then a very unforeseen scratch in the side pocket gave up ball in hand. It wasn't really a great deal left for Van Boning to do. So he's off and running now. Al Qaeda's lead reduced to two racks to one with rack four. Trading 2 1. Cold stroke. Ball. Made the one ball. But as we've all seen, the cue ball's been kicked in the bottom left corner. Please start it. Bad news for Shane. He would have been very happy sat in the break. Yeah, that's our first look at his break today. And we were talking earlier on, really bigging up his abilities from the break. And he starts the evening in that department with a scratch. Ooh, <laughs> that'll focus the mind a little. Never really looked like it was going to stay out, but did its best. Spoke earlier about his role in Spain's first World Cup of Pool win in this venue last year. It's been confirmed that he will defend the title along with Francisco Sanchez Ruiz in Lugo in their home country. End of next month. Don't think there was ever any doubt about that. But of course, as hosts, Spain get to put in a B team. And a few years ago, they might not really have been capable of fielding two strong sides. Well, they are now. Jonas Suto Camino and Jose Alberto Delgado, both of whom have shown form in some of the big events in recent times, will make up the B team. So Shane Van Bongling's first break of the tournament was a scratch. Extension called. And barring something extraordinary here, that's going to be his only visit to the table in this fourth rack. Oh, and we 
have seen something extraordinary. What well, happened there, Carl? Well, you know, he, when you said it, Michael, I thought, well, he's not quite come far enough round for this nine. I didn't expect him to miss it, but that was a lot thinner than the camera angle told us. And two big glaring errors there from Al KD. Absolutely. You are right, it wasn't ideal in the sense of how he would have liked to be on the nine, but when you look at it from there, you would still expect him to get that every time. What a let off for Van Boning. Sometimes over the years we've seen these still slide in and it tried, didn't it? It still tried, but I mean, listen, they should never fall. No, absolutely, the pocket and gravity doing their job there. Van Boning once again is straight up to the table. Can't wait to unleash that powerful break. So he was 2 0 down. And already he's back level. Well, two unbelievable errors from David. Could have been 4 0 so easily. Yeah, very easily. Deep fifth break. Shane for morning the break. Two wrecks each. Don't forget the fluke he's had as well, Michael. Yeah. This, has, this has been an amazing start, really. Yeah. The 6-9 fluke combo with which he won the second rack. 2-2. Two -two. Well, he's hooked on the blue two. That is the lowest ball on the table. If this was straight, he may be tempted to just play the jump shot straight away, but if there's a bit of an angle and he's coming away from the three ball, the next ball after the blue two, he may not bother. Well, he's straight down kicking at this. Well, that was expertly played, that really was. He's played it that way. Whether he's left the gap or not, he was trying to get the two up there and use all these balls down the bottom to hopefully get some sort of block. And there you go. Extension called. Got to be careful, he may scratch in the top right corner. No, is it full enough? Does this pass the purple five? I think it does. Also, Shane's got to be careful. He just that left side pocket, if there's a natural angle to scratch, so he may have to, well, he's looking there, so he can obviously go forward with a cue ball, that's okay. Still got a bit of work to do here though, because he's got to get from the three up to the pink four after this shot. There you see there's a gap, so this goes. Extension, please. Shane, I know this is a big rack as well, because he knows what David's done so far in this match. Okay, we've built this match up to be the match of the round, Michael. It's not really delivered yet, has it? No, absolutely not. Fascinating and eventful, though, in its own way. Even for players of this level of experience, when a match gets built up like that, sometimes that can make it harder to deliver. Don't think you'll be tempted with this pot. Such an easy... Hook in behind the three ball, the red three. Gotta make sure ball hits the rail. Yep, the purple five did.
think he's going into the rail first to hit the top side of the two. I don't know if he played that or not. I don't know if he was playing safe. I'll get a clearer idea from here. Yeah, a bit more pace. That two ball would have actually fell in the pocket. Yeah, David's feeling it out there. He was playing for the red three in the bottom right corner. So you can see how, how much pace he, he's not hit that ball, has he? So he does have a shot in the side though, but he wasn't playing this. Could maybe still go in the corner. It's a thin one, he's already missed the thin one. It was a nine ball. Lost the cue ball again though, hasn't he? He's obviously put everything into the pot there because of the previous miss. Not going for the pot, it was too thin. Trying to get the cue ball behind the eight, and that is a good job. Well done. Especially for his touching. How do you hit this? He's going to have to go off the bottom rail. Gonna have to go three rails and try and hit the four from behind. Maybe two rails and try and cut the pink four in the pocket. All because the cue ball's touching. He's took out the left side rail. Now there is a possible scratch on here for Shane as well. In that top left pocket. Obviously he's gonna just try and hit this ball and hope it's his day. You could see off the back rail how it goes near that corner. At least he's made a good hit. He's making David play a shot. Phenomenal amount of body movement there from David he's just he can see he's going through the motions here because he's made a few glaring errors he starts to build up on you yeah well you pointed it out a few shots ago when he was well short of pace obviously the outcome of the shot bore out what you were saying but you could even see it in his execution and the body movement and just not comfortable and getting the cue through the ball that's better though when you say that Mm. Cue balls near the rail, Michael. Yeah, I think I spoke about half a second too soon there. Good news is if he pops this ball, it will give him that little bit of feel-good factor. I'm surprised he's not just rolling it in, but anyway, decide to jack up. Yeah, well done. You can see he's fighting for everything here, can't you? Well, the way this rack has gone, whoever lost it was going to have some regrets. Those regrets will not belong to David Alcady. He's going to regain the lead. David okay. At three racks to two. More head shaking, soul searching from Van Boney. So I've said both of these players, multiple winners of this title. There's six players who've won it on more than one occasion. Ralph Suke way out in front with six titles. And then you can see there was a period where these two between them won it four times out of five. Van Boning's wins the last two times the event was actually staged in this country in 2014 and 15, the only time in the event's 30-year history that anyone has gone back-to-back. -back. David Alcady with his wins in 2017 and 19. Niels Fyen in between, another multiple winner of the title. Alexander Kazakis, who we saw go out earlier this evening, was the champion in 2021. And Joshua Filler, who went out last night, 
came here as the defending champion. Yep. We'll have to wait at least another year if he is to become the next multiple break winner six. of the title. David Arcade at the break. He's leading the match by three racks to two. Now can David Arcade settle down? He is leading the match. Could and probably should be further in front, though. 3-2. That's a good break, isn't it? Really is. No, it's not a good result, but it was a good break. Meaning you made the one in the side. What would you be doing here, Carl? Put me on the spot, Michael, why don't you? Mm, I just did. Yeah, it's tricky, really, because... Obviously, you're back at the train. table. The two's near the corner pocket. Obviously, you can't leave any real piece of the ball. Again. So he's just going to kick this, David. Get it back down table, leave distance. Does have a chance of putting it in the right centre if he goes off the two rails. <coughs> He's not playing that exactly, but he knows in the back of his mind it may go in. Wouldn't want it to hit one of the points though and stay around that area. The idea is he, is he hits this two ball really full. Cue ball stays there. And then the distance. Yeah, you see how he did it hit full? So it's going to stay around the middle of the table and he's going to leave a shot for Shane. Never an easy situation, that. It can sometimes make you look a bit foolish, but it's very fine margins. Have a look at the overhead here where the cue ball hits the two. Just not quite full enough. Using the five as a holder, he's missed the pot. By some distance as well. He's gone through the full range of emotions and facial expressions already in this match. And that one was somewhere between concern, confusion. Well, what's going on here, Carl? Yeah, I promise you, people watching, they have actually won this tournament two times each. We're not joking. But it becomes contagious, doesn't it, when one player starts missing unexpected balls, it can put doubt in the other one's head. Yeah, and because obviously it's not like one person's done it and the other one's playing great, mm. what's happening here is they're both struggling with the back arm, aren't they? So these guys are used to tournaments where they're playing match after match after match and you're straight into the action and you stay in it for as long as you're in the tournament. Whereas in this format, where it's just one table, they've both been waiting around for quite a while to play. Been here a few days already. I know kd has been in the arena watching a lot of matches and it gives it all time to build up the importance of it all in their heads and perhaps that's a factor. Yeah, and the fact that they've played a lot of matches against each other, not just in this tournament but in other tournaments even in Moscow Cup matches they've played each other so there's obviously the respect is there and obviously David wasn't in the event Shane was supposed to play Fedor then he was supposed to play Don Kwa Hong from Vietnam and then he's faced with a two-time champion in the Arcade so it's all been a bit bizarre for the players yeah issues to do with travel and visa prompting all the chopping and changing it did leave us with a match that we thought was going to be an absolute classic from the start. Not how it's going at the moment, but it's fascinating to watch. Mistakes are plenty on both sides. What it all adds up to so far is that they're level at three apiece.
if I'm going into a break. Three wrecks each. Ordinarily, when you're struggling like this, you think, well, I'm going to have to play better if I'm to have any chance of winning the match, but when they're both at it, maybe it won't be like that. Yeah, so it's another chance for David here. Dry break. During the little intermission we had there, Fanboni actually came over to near our commentary area and had a little chat with his good friend Jeremy Jones. Jeremy, of course, was a great wingman for him on the way to the world title last year. That Italian restaurant just across from the hotel in Milton Keynes became something of a campaign headquarters for them as they would meet between matches to discuss how it was all going. So no surprise that Van Boning would seek JJ's counsel as he did there between racks. We'll find out if it makes any difference. Certainly no better man to have in your corner. Extension called. Katie's own support network out in force though. Francisco Sanchez Ruiz is in the arena watching just hours after his own surprise elimination from the tournament. Another positional error. He's not got on the pink four how he wanted. At the minute, it's just error after error. Now, will he be patient and play the safe, or will he take a risky bank on? I believe the safety shot is definitely the shot. Use the five and the nine ball as a blocker. No, he's not hit this good either as well. It's like this, Carl. Do you stop thinking about trying to play better, or do you just accept that it's this sort of match and you've just got to knuckle down and scrap for every ball and find a way through to the next round? Yeah, it's just so difficult because you sat in your chair wondering what, what you've done. How, how is this match 3-3? Three, three? And it's just so hard to erase it. You can physically see it on the player's faces, can't you? Tough shot coming up, though, for Shane. It's not easy to get safe. And you could see the idea. It was always going to be difficult to get the cue ball in behind the seven, but he knew that purple five was a big ball. turn to try and use the five. Very Did he get there or has he left a little edge? Yeah. yeah, there's definitely an edge there for Shane. So, ball net. Well, that's not SVB's greatest highlight reel shot, is it? No, that makes you look very foolish, doesn't it? Straight in the pocket. That is unreal. It's like he just can't get his head clear and is thinking straight. I mean, what was that shot? Just try to hit it a bit thinner before the middle and just get the distance, get the four ball on the back rail. But so far away from doing that. Yeah, he's not getting any younger. Maybe the old eyes are starting to give up. He'll reach his 40s later in the summer. You got to that landmark last year, Carl, so you would know. Steady on, Michael, steady on. He 
He's not happy with this. Look where he's left the cue ball. He's left it pretty much straight. Anywhere but straight. The only ball you ever want to be straight on is the nine ball. Now he's got a bit of work to do here. Yeah, is it that good though? That yeah, was a very, very good shot to get the cue ball there. Maybe that will just wake David up a little bit. Couldn't put the cue ball any better. Shane Van Boning still has not led in this match. David O'Kady hits the front once more at 4 3. It's just a habit, isn't it? He's having a word with the referee, Marcel Eckhart, about something. It's hard to tell, though, whether they're just having a laugh about something or was he raising a concern. Anyway, I'm sure we'll find out if it was the latter. Well, Cady, as we've said, has been around a long time, 44 years of age. Two-time winner of this event. It's been his favourite tournament. He's got a very good Moscone Cup record as well, though. He's played in it four times. First of them was all the way back in 2006 and never been on the losing side. It was one tied match. But all those other times, Europe have ended up winning the Moscone. First Spanish player ever to be part of the European team and was the only one until his great mate FSR joined him at the back end of last year. David Arqueda is leading the match by four rex to three. Do you think the only way we're going to see someone get any rhythm going here is if they can manage to force themselves two or three racks in front and that will free up the arm a bit? Yeah, I think that's what needs to happen. And then the other player obviously knows it's, it's time to dig deep and... <laughs> Make some happen, but he's made a ball, a five ball. There it is. David seems to be breaking a little bit better. I don't mean that break in particular, but he's made the one ball a couple of times off the break. And there you see again, it was close, wasn't it, at that point? But luckily, a ball went in, and he's got a nice layout here. Yeah, he's not had a break and run from either player since Arcady in the opening rack. He's got an opportunity to do it here though and perhaps start to establish that daylight that we were saying there might be the key to finally getting some rhythm going here. So much success in the team events throughout 2022 for Al the World Cup win, the Moscone Cup win. But in the individual matchroom events, semi finals at the UK Open in London it was the only good showing he had. Last 64 of the European Open and the US Open. Didn't even make single elimination stage at the World Championship. He lost his opening match in this tournament, so. Copper box in May of last year. The only time in any way recently that he's done well in an individual matchroom event. Go back a couple of years to his run to the Championship League final. Of course, world semi final. 2021, but all those things a couple of years ago now. And 
Look at that. Only one rack in front, but look at the difference in terms of balls potted. Well, Cady has reached his half century. And once this seven ball goes down, he'll have potted four times as many balls as SVB. Yeah, there was that rack where David missed a nine ball and Shane just stepped up and rolled it in. Then he scratched in another rack and left two or three balls left. That's what this game can do. You can run the full table out, miss the nine, your opponent rolls it in and wins the rack. I always think when you explain nine ball to someone who's never seen it, it sounds like a crazy game. Now, in some respects it is, but when you see it played at this level by really good players, it all makes much more sense. So how Kading won the first two racks in this match. Since then, there's never been more than one in it. Extension, please. That's about to change here. I think the word we're looking for in this instance is timely. That's the way to describe the break and run. It's pulled out Katie. Two ahead at 5-3. Well, he's seen it all, been through it all many times, Carl. He'll keep a clear head, Van Boning, about the situation in the match, but hasn't brought much of it to his actual play so far this evening. No, and he knows it's a race to nine. Arcady's just got past the halfway mark, so there's still plenty of time, but of course, his winner breaks. He needs to get out of the chair. You just never know, do you? Number two in the world at the moment was overtaken at the US Open last year by Francisco Sanchez Ruiz, who stayed on top since and now has a massive lead, having added all those points for winning the World Championship. 39, as we've said, will be 40 in July. The ninth rack, David Arcade to break, leading by five racks to three. Now, just a glimmer of hope with the fact that he's gone a couple of racks clear and the way he dealt with the last rack so efficiently that O'Kady can start to take a firm grip here. Nine ball is moving. Cue ball got kicked near the corner. No shot. So Shane will know this. The blue two is the ball he's on. <laughs> See in the background the faces of the 16 players up on those big banners. Push Looks fantastic. Call. And as each of them is eliminated, the light in front of them turns red. Some very big names. Right there. Images lit up in that colour already in this tournament. Yeah, what he's doing here is he's leaving the cue ball on again. the bottom Shame. rail. Because, you know, David knows if Shane just pots the ball, how does he get the cue ball back for the three? Looks almost impossible. David, please play again. Gives it back. What has David got in mind here? He certainly won't, won't be going for the pot. He won't be going for the pot and trying to get on the three. Safety shot didn't look obvious as well. Maybe you could just push the two over towards the nine area. Roll the cue ball towards the seven. Didn't seem to offer loads. Sort of weird to a degree, I think, unless he's left a cross bank for Shane. Got to get the cue ball out of the way so you don't double hit. Extension, please. 
and he's got to stay on the three ball. This is this is a nasty little shot. Yeah, he's played the double hit, hasn't he? Couldn't get it out of the way. Not the worst result, though. Well, it wasn't even close, was it? So. I think David's got a nice shot here. I think he can play the bank into the middle and keep the cue ball on the bottom rail and use the pink four as a blocker. Yeah, looking at it from the overhead angle there, it looks much better for him. And the shot was on. Yeah, just look at where the two goes here. It looks like it was going to go in. It's both points. Yeah, it was way too wide on the point, but... He always knew that four was a big ball. SVB is going airborne, trying to pop this in the side and try and get that cue ball moving up through the gap between the 5-9. Is the seven ball going to be his friend? to get the cue ball popping. The points of that side pocket That's taking tall. a hammering from both players in the last few moments. But the two stubbornly remaining on the table. Now, is David going to attempt the cross bank? Cue ball looks like it's going to get in the way for him. The <laughs> safety game's on point in this match. The rest of it might be a bit worrying, but at least he's playing some good safeties. SVB is in all kinds of trouble here. Just trying to play a hit off the one rail. Watch the cue ball swerve a little bit towards the two. He's good at hitting the ball, Shane. Have you noticed? He always makes contact, doesn't he? It's very rare he gives you the ball in hand. Mm. And what that means is, yeah, he didn't play to leave the two balls there, but because he's hitting it, he's just hoping that he leaves David some sort of shot to play, and that's what's happened here. This one has gone wrong. I don't know where he was going with the cue ball. At first, I thought he was trying to get around the brown seven, but... Who knows? Answers on a postcard. Shane's going to try and get the cue ball behind the six ball. Oh, nicely done. And there's a two-man combo waiting in the wings if al misses this two. So this is a must-hit, Michael. Yeah, good spot. We've got to update that expression, by the way. Answers on a postcard. I mean, who sends postcards nowadays? Text us your answers, something like that, maybe? <laughs> Stroke. Well, he has give ball in hand up, but he's moved all the balls, so there's no combo left. Restart the clock. Might that have been in his thinking in the way he played the shot? Yeah, possibly. He would have known he'd like to move something, and then at least Shane's got to run the table. As long as, he, as long as Shane gets on the three ball first shot, all the balls are sat nicely, so it's about this shot for Shane. job there. That was a very underrated shot he played there. This was the old purpose, Michael, of moving 
the event back down to 16 players, extend the races a little bit. So the opening two rounds were raced to nine, then the semis are raced to 11, then the final will be 13. And this is the reason why, because Shane's still got time to claw his way back in this match. Yeah, we've seen it time and time again already in this tournament. You have the opportunity to have three or four maybe distinct phases of the match and a real narrative can develop and then a whole different narrative can replace it. I think it's been excellent. I think it's already felt like one of the biggest titles in the game, right up there with the World Championship and the US Open. But the fact that the match distances are now comparable to those events only enhances that sense. And whoever's lifting the trophy on Saturday night, it'll probably be the most hard-won World Masters title there's ever been. Slightly bigger bounce would have been ideal, but he's still okay. Play this into the rail. Yeah, there you see, that's the way he's played it. He knows the pocket will swallow the ball up. Just starting to see the standards perhaps creeping up a touch. Shane Van Boning clinging on here. He's back to one behind. Al-Kady leads 5-4. So much coming up over the summer months. We've got a couple of events in Spain back to back, the Spanish Open and the World Cup of Pool. We've got the UK Open as well in a few weeks' time in London and junior events running alongside those big tournaments as well. European Open back to Fulda, which such a success in its inaugural staging last year. That'll be in August, and it all leads towards the US Open in Atlantic City. FSR defending there over the last six days of September. The Asian Open to follow that. And, of course, all roads, as ever, lead to the Moscone Cup starting 6th of December at Alexandra Palace. Shane Van Boning hasn't really been able to bring it with the break so far in this match. This will be a great time to find the on switch. This is okay. He's got a shot of the two. only won one of his three breaking racks so far in this match. Hasn't run out from the break in any of them. surrounding this match, Carl. It feels more like a semi-final or a final. Other than round one. Yeah, obviously they both won this event two times and this is just the first round. But I think the way the start of the match went, you know, both players made a couple of glaring errors, didn't they? So it's kind of built up nicely, but you you can just tell, can't you, they've, they, enough's enough, they've zoned in now. Yeah, we've definitely seen the mistakes and slip-ups drop significantly in the last few racks. And we're looking at that schedule there, the World Cup of Pool, one of the key components of that. I told you Arcady will be there again. Well, so will Shane Van Boning. He'll be partnering Skylar Woodward. 
USA have only won the World Cup once. Van Bonen was part of that team with Rodney Morris in Rotterdam 15 years ago. said it would be a good time in a breaking context for him to find the on switch and a wonderful moment to pull out his first break and run He's drawn level for the third time at five racks apiece. Before the tournament starters, he spoke to us about his prospects. When you play the World Pool Masters, you're already going to play against the top pool players from all over the world. Not really surprising to see, you know, the, the best pool players losing the first round. Um, you know, that's pool. You can never play perfect. Things can go wrong in the game, and there's a lot of luck in the game, so anybody can win or lose. David won the Whirlpool Masters before, twice. He's a very strong player, so I just need to get up there and play my game and try to not make any mistakes, take advantage of his mistakes if he has any. I've always wanted to win the Whirlpool Masters, and uh, I'm just happy to win two. Gonna try to get number three. Well, the more recent Objective was to get to number five in terms of racks one in this match, and having done that, he now breaks with a chance to go in front for the first time. The 11th he rack. He was one of the favourites. Same from Boning to break. But by the time he five actually entered the fray, he was the favourite for the tournament with so many big names and so many of the guys who have been sharing around these big titles over the last few years, already making their exits. Found the range of the one ball into the side pocket this time. This morning, Michael, me and JJ was on the table having a go. Not one of us made it once. <laughs> Obviously, it's a timing thing, and you've got to put the hours in. But once these once these players have figured it out and they've dialed in, they're going to make the one. Obviously, more consistent than not. And we all knew this when this break rule was brought in. But the reason why it's been brought in is so you can't really control the cue ball and keep setting the cue ball up in the centre of the table, which gives you a shot all around the table. So it's to add a bit of variety. And we've seen it there where Shane had to go for the bank shot. Yep, we've seen a few nine ball balls go in in the opening two days because it's coming off the side rail and kicking the nine in the pocket. Obviously, as a former player, I don't like the golden break. And why would I? I like it when I made one, don't mm. get me wrong. Extension cold. But it's horrible when you're on the other side of one. shot to mark down as a bad one because he was trying to bank the two up table and leave the cue ball behind the nine but that looked quite tight almost didn't look on can Shane play a carom and pop the purple Special five piece. with the cue ball if the bank's on he may play the bank as well So 
Oh, it's the bank shot. Oh, beautiful. Look at the cue ball. What a shot he played there. What a shot he's played there. That's the shot of the match so far for SVB. Yeah, without a doubt. And he had the break and run in the last rack. Now he's pulled out this shot here. Absolute perfection. And moments like that are what you need to shake you out of the sort of rut that SVB found himself in for so much of this match. Yeah, SVB's not scared to go for the shots. He always plays the, the correct game. He plays the attacking version of nine ball. The game, what, you know, the legend Earl Strickland brought to the screens many, many moons ago. The legend Earl the Pearl. It was fantastic having Earl at the Premier League event in Leicester just a couple of months ago. Never stopped talking the entire week, and I include while he was playing in that. It's just wonderful to hear his stories and his thoughts. I think it was never stop moaning and all about yeah, talking. Yeah, well, that's true. You've got to talk to moan. Doesn't want to be straight. That would be the worst case scenario. You can see he's got a bit of an angle. But what he'll do here is he'll play it into the rail and that will create more angle just to get the cue ball out more into the middle of the table. So much of this match, neither player could establish any real momentum. Well, I think winning three racks in a row counts as momentum. And by doing that, it's Shane Van Boning has gone ahead for the very first time in this match as 6-5. So it feels like a different match now, Carl. We're seeing still some mistakes, but much higher standard than earlier on. And the tension, for whatever reason, seems to have lifted a bit for SVB in particular. Yeah, maybe Shane knows that he could have been down bigger than he was. So obviously, you know, he wasn't breaking too clever early on. He seems to have figured that out a bit more. And it can be a funny game, Pool, can't it? You know, it's all about chance and. What he did there, which was great, is he decided to go full-blooded for the bank shot, made it in the heart of the pocket, got wonderful position for the three, and now he's going to be feeling good. And he's got the break. Yeah, this is the shot you were talking about. You called it the shot of the match so far from him. And how could anyone disagree with that? Big moment for him. Stepping it up as the winning line Rack starts 12. to appear Shane on the horizon. The he needs three more racks to set up a quarter-final tomorrow against Copenhagen. Yeah, early on in that rack, we was having a little chat about the break. I just want to allude to it again because now David knows things can happen on the break. Both players know this. We know this because we're watching it. Can he make the line? Does he scratch? Does he make the one? There's a lot of variations now with this break some people like it some don't but the players they picked it hit them good hit them very good didn't it one thing I have noticed Carl and you would be in a much better position to comment on it there seem to be a lot less than normal instances so far in this tournament of multiple balls going down off the break. I don't know if you feel that, and if you do, why you think something like that might happen? I think because this table is the same table as the Moscone Cup, it's, it's dead four inches from point to point. I think some of the open events still have been a little bigger than four inches. So I think off the break, you're getting a few more balls slide in when maybe they shouldn't obviously on here they're probably not doing that 
Yeah, simple explanation. Probably the right one. But what I've noticed is so far in all these opening round matches, Shane, Catchy, there was another player who seemed to be breaking at their maximum pace, Mario. Hmm. And I think there's two ways of breaking. It's full speed, as you know, as hard as you can hit them, but it's a little bit softer and draw the cue ball more. I think the power break, I think in the long run, I, I just believe that is, you're going to get more from it. And a lot of the pool fans around the world, the rate Shane is the best breaker pool's ever seen. And I think when he's breaking at full pelt, <laughs> You wouldn't go far on copying him. And when his breaking's been at its best over the last couple of years, I certainly would have observed that it's not there right from the start. It's a few matches in that he starts to produce his very best breaking. So if he can get through this match, as looks increasingly likely, the best may very much be still to come in that department. When O'Kady led 5-3, we were talking about the prospect of him establishing some daylight and that perhaps freeing him up to play his best stuff. Well, it's gone entirely the other way, and since then, it's going to be four in a row for the American. He had to play that ball hard because he didn't leave himself enough angle to just stun the ball in and let the cue ball naturally float over. He was a little bit straight. Well, this is so much more like it from Van Boning. Can OKD do anything to turn it round? Will he get a chance? Van Boning is really stepping things up here, and he's two away from a place in the quarterfinals of the World Masters. How it's all turned around for the legend in your picture over the last 20, 25 minutes or so. Shane Van Boning was 5-3 down to David OKD. He's won four in a row since then, two of them with break and runs. Again, made the one ball on the break. And this is what he's faced with. Not easy. It's a big shot to take on. But I think he will do. Oh, that was nice. That was nice, Michael. He stepped it up here, hasn't he? I was just thinking, would he have taken that on half an hour ago? Brings up the half century of balls potted. Still a few behind, despite leading the match. In fact, he could go 8 5 up here, and if he pots his last five balls to do that, they'll be dead level in that statistic. It's not about how many you pot, is it, Carl? It's about which ones you pot and when you pot them. There's a couple of shots that stand out, isn't there, Michael? What Shane has played, that's gonna look like helping him get over the line. Just gonna get one more shot right here. Just because of where the nine ball is. Anything long could cause 
issues. So much so he's under it. This I don't know if we can roll this in and hold for the nine. He was so scared of landing on that back rail and hooking himself behind the nine. He's under it. This. So this is a big shot. If he's got to get the cue ball up and down for this nine. I think nine chain. He may just try and roll it in and leave another thin nine ball. He's going up and down. Oh, he's done well. Another good shot, this. Them shots, they're so underrated, they really are. They're not easy. Let's pop the ball and find that line up and back down. This one still needs potting. Should be okay. a little bit of a tester but he's passing all the tests at the moment that's now five on the bounce and three break and runs in the last four racks for Shane Van Boning he's taken a firm command of this still shaking his head but no reason to normal service has been resumed yeah five three down right Michael yeah five on the bounce now well, we have to remind ourselves how much he was struggling with his game early on in the match they both were Something has clicked for him. And he will go into the quarterfinals if he can win just one more rack as the definite favourite to win this tournament. This was the shot on the eight. Even playing it as well as he did, he still had a little bit of work to do on the nine, but the way this is going over the last few racks, it would have been a big surprise if he'd missed it. brings the focus as you can see there when he's just watching the balls and this was the nine with which he took himself to the hill the 14th rack Shane van Boning is so breaking the and the breaking racks have really improved and this is his last of the match Look at the power he generates on the break. Needs a three to get out of the way. You can see he's willing the bump, mm. isn't he, with his leg? It's been like Mr. Bean tonight with all the facial contortions he's been pulling. Three balls on the break there, Michael. Ever since I said about nobody potting multiple balls, he loves proving people wrong, doesn't he? Extension called. How about that for a shot? Look at the vision there. Mm. Sending the blue two off two rails. Yeah, maybe wide it a little further central. Couldn't get too much more out of it. Extension, please. Nicely done, David. The kick and stick. And he's back against the wall. He's got to try and come with something magical now. He's the last four wrecks in this match. Oh, 
Well, Shane's not messing about. He's going for the jump cue. He could kick off the top rail here. But he's got the short stick, so he's trying to pop the ball. Where's it going to end up? I think it's going to be okay. Oh, that little nudge. I think this pops. Yeah, and as Van Boning potted all those balls off the break, there isn't a great deal left for Alcady to do here. Must have been wondering just a few minutes ago whether he'd get any kind of proper chance to have any further impact on the match. Well, here is that chance. And he should go 8-6 from here. This needs to slow down. Mm, big time. That's been the story of David in this match. Cue ball position has just been all over the show. Yep, that should seal the deal in this rack. So, needing to win four straight. And that's in a quarter of that task now completed. So after losing five racks in a row, David Alcady has troubled the scorers again and closed to 8-6 behind. talking earlier, Carl, about how this contest was hyped up. Big disappointment early on, but the standards improved, and there'll be so much to talk about when this is over, and in the end, it has been, if not quite the nature of contests we were anticipating, one to remember. Yeah, SVB decided to go full blood there with the jump shot. It's cost him the rack, but we always felt this match was going to be close with high-quality stuff. It started off very uh, poor, let's just say. But it has picked up a little bit, and one way or another, we are close. 8 6 SVP. Well, I've had quite a few close matches already in this first round, particularly today. One thing we haven't had yet is a Hill Hill finish. And that prospect's still very much alive here. Remember, oh, Katie. Thank you, Dean. To stave break. off what would be a. Third Training. successive year of going out of this event in his opening match. 8 6 down. Yeah, it just doesn't look the same, does it, Michael? It didn't look as good as breaks of we've, as we've been seeing from Shane and the balls didn't really split right nine looked like it was going to go near the side well it did go near the side I mean in the pocket and what table layout has Shane got well, he's got an easy shot on the one but a tough positional shot to come to get on the blue two That is useful. That is a useful nudge on that six. That's the chance now, Michael. Sorry, that's the chance he's been waiting for. Yeah, the chance to get it done and get this over with. Such a struggle early on. Well, he's improved, though. He 
might quite fancy staying out there a bit longer, but... We're very pleased to get past the opening round. We've seen so many of the players who we've been used to witnessing in the winner's enclosure over the last few years already bow out of this tournament. It's a big opportunity for so many players now in the next few days. Think of the likes of Max Lechner, Mario He, Victor Zielinski perhaps more than anyone. What winning a title like this could mean for them and for the game. That took a little wobble mm. in the pocket, but it's always going to fall. Yeah, that's okay. Cupel spins up for the purple five. Six is in a good spot. And then the seven to the eight. He sat nicely as well. Well, Michael, it was all about the start for me. David Alcady, it was 2-2 within the first four racks. It could well have been a, a, certainly 3-1. Obviously, mm. he fluked the nine ball, didn't he? But he made a couple of glaring errors. He missed the nine ball, and he scratched in the side after flicking, I think it was the nine again in one of the racks. Yeah, it was the nine, yeah. And it was so eventful early on. You're saying 3-1, and absolutely it could have been, but wouldn't have taken much to happen differently for him to have won mm. all of those racks. And, May very well have been a different night. But to Skylar Woodward in 2021 and Ko Pin Yi in 22, it looks as though we're going to add the name of Shane Van Boning to complete that hat-trick of opening match defeats for David Alcady in the World Masters, a tournament that's been such a big part of his career. He'd won it two out of the three previous stagings prior to that. He was leading 5-3 in this match. But it looks as though he's going to bow out, having won only one further rack. And what it all means is that of the five players who retained the Moscone Cup for Europe just before Christmas, all five have gone out in the first round here. And the final part of that has been applied by the only member of the US team they defeated who's in the field for the World Masters. Shane Van Boning has won this tournament twice before. He'll go into the quarterfinals as the favourite to win it again. He's finished strongly to beat David Alcady 9-6.